Welcome to yet another installment of Pura Vida. I know we've seen many, many different reviews for cigars. Today I thought we'd just switch things up a little and do a review for a spirit, but not any ordinary spirit I have today here with me. This special treat. No, I've not adopted a new pet. This is, of course, the artwork or the cask itself, the box for the Jose Cuervo Reserva de la Familia 2012 Vintage Sipping Tequila. Featuring artwork from a different Mexican painter, each vintage. This one is of course done courtesy of Ricardo Pinto. This is the 2012 vintage, so it features a bunny on it. Coming in, slight lid box as you can see. And inside it is the beautiful, beautiful bottle. Look at the label on that crisp. As you can see, it's bottled on the 25th of January 2013. It is of course a numbered bottle, 3,899, and there are only 17,000 bottles produced every vintage. The top of it is actually sealed with wax. Very cool feature right there. Bearing all of the Jose Cuervo stamps. A beautiful dark amber colored spirit it is just gorgeous looks rather viscous but it's actually pretty thin gorgeous legs on the spirit as you can see wow it just goes and goes and goes so there's quite a lot of sugar in this leftover This entire line was actually introduced in the year 1995 to commemorate 200 years of the House of Cuvervo. And you know, they featured, these are in the private cellars of the Cuvervo family itself. Now you know, the tequila in it goes anywhere from 3 year old Anejo tequila all the way to include even 30 years old tequila in the final bottling itself. How much of the ratio is it? How much of this percentage of it? We would never know. I guess that's the secret right there. It could, it could only be just 1% of 30 year old tequila. In. Wow. You get wafts and wafts of wood. Heavy wood, actually more akin to sandalwood, but the spiciness can be detected on the nose itself. The bouquet lands a very sort of clove cinnamon forward uh, flavor profile or sorry nosing profile itself you know you're getting a very, very strong hints of wooded spice but it's intertwined and intermingled with a nice hit of sweet vanilla and of course this particular tequila has been finished it has been aged in new american and french oak barrels as well so that's where the the little hint of woodiness as well as the sweetness of vanilla comes from and I'm also detecting a bit of salinity, a little brininess on the nose, you know. Um, it almost smells salty, it almost smells like the seashell. So getting a little herbs on the nose as well, a little parsley detected, very faint, just on the finish. Wow. I mean, first and foremost, you have to put it out there. You would never in a million years think that this is a tequila because it drinks, it feels like a cognac, like a fine cognac. I wouldn't say a whiskey, but closer to a cognac, but wow, on the flavor profile itself, on the palate, a burst of agave goodness, I must say, getting nice toffee hints. The spiciness is there, a little black pepper on the finish. But you know, just like on the nose itself, a lot of the a lot of the notes that you got on the nose are actually represented on the palate because I'm getting that nice wooded spice on the palate as well. I can taste a little bit of sandalwood there, I can taste a bit of cinnamon there, but actually the one spice who I feel has the biggest influence on this particular spirit is clove. Um, beautiful. The mouthfeel, it just coats the mouthfeel, it's almost oily. 
actually, but it's not a very viscous spirit at all, I must say. Um, it's sweet, you know, you're getting very gentle caramel notes of it. I think I would say the vanilla is only on the nosing because I'm not getting much vanilla on the palate, but for now, a lot of caramel toffee notes of sweetness as well. As for the brininess that I mentioned in the nosing, you actually do get some salinity on the palate, which is really amazing because on the finish, you get this sort of very peppery, salty, and just a slight bitter finish, which I feel is probably the influence of the American and the French oak. Um, it's very, very balanced. I've given it some time in the glass and I've stolen a few sips, um, of course. Um, the warmth of it is just gorgeous, you know, it's very similar to cognac, you know, you're getting almost like a ginger type warmth that goes down and coats the palate. Coming in at 40% ABV, so it's not too strong, you know, it's some, nothing that's going to really pack a punch unless you're doing shots of it, which that would just be blasphemous altogether. Only 17,000 bottles produced worldwide. So it's going to be quite tough to source a bottle of this, but if you can find it, I got really lucky with this one. Uh, if you can find it, go ahead and get it. You will not regret it. It'll be one of the more exciting spirits that you have on your shelf, you know, to complement your single malts and the likes of that. Absolutely beautiful from the from the nosing to the appearance, wow, the salinity, the brininess is just beautiful. That's actually my favorite aspect of this sipping tequila. The brininess on the palate, um, how it feels really bright on the nose, but on the palate, it's really mellow. It's very well rounded indeed. You get a bit of a citrus, a bit of lemon peel, a bit of orange rind, but very faint on the finish. But it's all so well balanced with the spice, the wood the salinity, you know, everything. It's just harmonious, right? I couldn't recommend this more. Like I said, if you can find it, go ahead and get it. You know, it doesn't matter which vintage. See you guys next time on Pura Vida. Till then, happy drinking.